Today on the channel, we got a hairy bipedal creature alert from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Last Ronin, we got Master Splinter. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! to the channel for another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Last Ronin unboxing and review. And today on the channel, we got Master Splinter. But for all your Master Splinter needs and a whole lot more, make sure you end up at Entertainment Earth. Use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10% on all in-stock items. Anything over $79 does ship free. Got to get a deal out there. And of course, I did pick this up, part of the toy event in March at Walmart. Of course, we're in 2024 currently. Uh, this was part of that Walmart big sale thing. I think NECA store had it as well. So you could grab them there. I think eventually you'll see them at the Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, Targets of the World, uh, all the other stores out there. But uh, Splinter, here today in the last Ronin line. Of course, we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. And you can't have the turtles without Splinter. They're like uh, mashed potatoes and gravy. Yes, I heard it. That's what I heard on the old playground back in the day. But these guys are always looking good. It's always fun to get a splinter because you know me, I'm a sucker for a hairy bipedal creature. Love a good rat. Heck, we have two rats in our house. Uh, my daughter has, and they're crazy. They love me, though. Every time they see me coming, uh, they always think I'm going to give them a treat or something. And then they like to play with the dogs, of all things. It's wild. Rats, they love turtles, and they love dogs. Who knew? Who knew? But let's take a look at old Master Splinter in the last Ronin. Looking like Splinter, but different as well. Last Ronin packaging design, artwork a little different for Splinter. There's Splinter. He's looking more spry in his old age here, uh, jumping around, fighting a little bit more. He was always kind of like uh, Mr. Miyagi. I'm sure he was based on that guy a little bit. And, you know, I've never seen the Karate Kid, but I know enough to be dangerous. Uh, but he's waxing on, waxing off. But I always felt like Splinter. He's like, oh, it's an old man uh, rat. You know, he can't do much. And then, bam, he just gets you really quick. That's kind of what we got represented right here. Classic last run in artwork on the side there. And then, of course, the back, we got a little bit of blurb. We got some glamour shots up there. Donatello not included, just in case you were wondering there. And uh, then, of course, we got the pictures on the inside. And then you got the figure itself. A lot of hands here. Splinter getting awfully handsy. I heard he used to do that with April under the sea. That's what I heard. Uh, the last Ronin. Who is the last Ronin? A future battle ravaged New York City alone surviving turtle embarks on a seemingly hopeless mission seeking justice for the family he lost. From legendary TNMNT, co-creators Eastman and Laird get ready for the final story of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Three decades in the making. What terrible events destroyed his family and left New York crumbling post-apocalyptic nightmare? All will be revealed in this climatic turtle tale that sees longtime friends become enemies and new allies emerging in the most unexpected places. Can the surviving turtle triumph? Well, he's going to try to, and we know what happens there to be continued, of course. But there it is, the old packaging up high. See you later. Join the pile. Join the pile. There it is, old Master Splinter in the plastic prison. Going to take him offline. Get him out of the package. We'll be back. Talking all things Last Ronin Splinter. All right, let's get down to business with Splinter here. Well, let's start with the accessories per the norm here. And we got so many hands and even forearms with this. It kind of makes my head spin. Two fists of Splinter Fury right out of the packaging there. Then, of course, we do get all the different hands you could want. You want gripping hands. We got two sets of gripping hands. You want uh, kind of reaching hands, a uh, deeper gripping hand. You have that. And then you got two splayed out hand slapping ones. Uh, you want to give somebody a high five, you want to slap them in the face, you can do that. So you got pretty much everything you need from Splinter here. But really interesting here, and I'm not really sure. And maybe I'll figure out the reasons why. But we do get these forearms. And it feels like these are just perfectly fine forearms. So I'm not exactly sure why we needed another set of this. Am I missing something? Can somebody clue me in right here? As this does seem a little bit strange, and I don't know what I'm missing. I don't know. I can't figure it out, but it is two extra sets of forearms and hands. This feels kind of like too much, and it's weird to complain that I'm getting too much for my money, but it feels like it wasn't needed. They could have put it into another weapon or an extra head, maybe. I don't know. 
but very strange there. So pick your poison in the hand department. Then you get into his weapons here. Of course, get the big old samurai-like blade, big curved steel blade here looking good. Kind of a barber stripe uh, pull at the bottom here looking good. Gold top and then gold on the bottom, bringing it all back home, of course, like a young Bob Dylan. Sword does fit right in there. You got the sheath for it. Yes, it's a sheath, and you do have that. Looking very nice, looking very ornate. Doesn't look like you can store that. Sometimes you could store that on the side. Not the case right here. But I do like Splinter having a weapon like this. It feels like if Splinter's going to go down, he's going to go down fighting, and he'll reach for his sword, I would imagine. I would imagine. Or he would reach for his stick. Oh, watch out for the stick. But he does got this, of course, his walking stick, sometime weapon. We know this is an iconic one for Splinter. This is what I think of with Splinter, a bit of a cane here for him, looking very nice. So that's the accessories for this one. Now we dive into the rat with a heart of gold here, Splinter. And I guess I know it's Splinter because it's Turtle Lane, but if this was just a, a head somebody handed me and said, what is this? I guess I'd probably guess Splinter. There's not a lot of other rat action figures. But he does look definitely interesting. It looks a little bit stereotypical with that uh, hair coming out. It looks like kind of like that uh, Big Trouble Little China guy with the, kind of the facial hair there. Looking very interesting. He's got two big old rat teeth looking interesting as well. Got the gray eyebrows, a little bit of gray in his hair as well. He's still got most of the brown hair going on. Two ears all the way back and very fluffy, furry. Uh, brown rodent is old Splinter here. I wouldn't say he's mad or happy. He's just kind of stoic in the middle. He's got a football-shaped head going on there. He does got his, uh, is it a kimono? Is that what he's wearing? Uh, he's got that over the top here. Maybe it's a gi, who knows, but a nice ornate one. Uh, you got all kinds of different colors going on. Brown belt against the maroon. You got the gold kind of up on the top, looking very, very nice. Brown outfit throughout here, as we've seen in the past with old Master Splinter, looking interesting there as well. He's got the wrapped up hands. We talked about the hands already. Uh, it looks like he's been in the boxing ring. It looks like his hands are all wrapped up, ready to go. That would get like old if you're just wearing this every single day. It's like, well, I got to get up for the day. I'm going to brush my teeth, going to wrap my hands. Uh, I used to be a scientist at wrapping my hands. I remember it took me a long time to get the pattern just right. But once you know it, once you do it, it's like tying your shoes. And I used to love wrapping my hands really, really tight. Sometimes I'd wrap them twice. And then I get ready. I get ready to go in the old MMA gym back in the day. Oh, funner times. Too old for that stuff now. But man, I miss a good grapple. I miss a good scrap. There you go. Splinter living the life to the end, apparently there. Uh, but looking good. Now, articulation on this one going to be interesting. Arms don't really, I mean, they do go around, but they do get in the way and they are very tight. So you could get all the way around here. Double jointed elbows looking very nice there. Of course, forearms removable. Still kind of puzzled at that. Hands removable as well. Head back and forth, a little bit of up and down there, not sure on that. Waist articulation, of course. Legs do go up. He's got some big old thighs, some thunder thighs is what Splinter's got going on here. You do get a single jointed knee. You do get a joint at the ankle, and then you get toe articulation, and then you do get a uh, peg hole there for a stand, and you're probably going to need it with him as those Splinter feet are always tough to stand. He's got such a big body and these little skinny feet Always difficult to get stand. Now, this tail can help out in that as it is uh, articulated on the tail, back and forth, side to side, and then it does have a bendy wire. So you can move this around however you want to. So you can use this to aid in standing. Same thing with this cane over here. You can use that to aid in standing as well. But an interesting version of Master Splinter. This one feels like uh, he's more uh, go than show, I would say, on this one. This looks like a Splinter that's ready to fight. It's ready to scrap. He's ready to throw down. And I guess if your life's on the line, you got to do something like that. And that's kind of how this one feels here. Where other versions of Splinter over the years always kind of felt like the uh, old man with a cane that could fight if he needed to, but preferred to just kind of head in the background there. This feels like a different version of Splinter to me. But I do actually like this one a lot more than I anticipated. There's something special about this one. Maybe it's because it's so different. That's what I like about it. But it is an interesting figure. A little bit of a head scratcher with some of the accessories. Would have liked maybe another head instead of some of these hands and forearms. I think I would have enjoyed that. But it is what it is. No change in history on this one. But Splinter, Last Ronin looking pretty good. And I do got the first to fall uh, Raphael right here. So you can kind of see that size difference uh, between Raphael and Splinter. If you're keeping track at home for that one right there. So there it is, Master Splinter from The Last Throne. And what are your guys' thoughts? Is this a pickup? Is it a pass? A long game? The dreaded no game? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, you made it this far. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on the old notification bell. We got videos every single day and then some. Yes, it's true. And then some. 
So check out the Patreon to get early access to all those videos from both YouTube channels. Patreon, best way to support this very YouTube channel. You can also support the channel, PrestonTees.com, search Kyle Peterson, and don't forget social media, Sir Paul 64 on the X, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads, and on Instagram. And you can hit me on any of those if you want an autographed copy of my book, The Complete Guide to the Jax Classic Superstars by yours truly. 700 pages just shy of, of course. Uh, and it is available at Barnes & Noble and Amazon as we speak. Appreciate all the support. So for The Last Ronin and Master Splinter 2, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.